No, you're not hearing things. I know you're used to listening to my voice at 4.30 on a Friday. And you're probably thinking, what's this guy doing at 12.30 on a Friday? Well, obviously, we bring you these educational shows, well, shows on education once in a while. And uh, today is just one of those times. when. But the different thing about this show today is that we have a different university. Where is it from? Well, I guess your guess is as good as mine. Um... Okay, wait, let me just ex- uh, introduce my guest. And uh, uh, it is my pleasure to welcome uh, Jody Alton. Did I get your name right? That's right. Right, okay. Uh, tell us where you're from, what you're doing here. So, I'm from RMIT University, which right. is in Melbourne. Just in a second, just a second, Jody. Sorry for interrupting of you course. there. But uh, um, you just heard us say, uh, say that again, RMIT. RMIT. Ha- All right, right. Okay, so that's unmistakably uh, Aussie. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. So RMIT, uh, for the benefit of uh, our listeners, our local listeners at least, uh, uh, we'll have to, I have to repeat that. R-M-I-T. Uh, people are not used to the accent um, and uh, the, the quickness with which you speak. But anyway, uh, all right. So RMIT, what does it stand for? That is a Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. We're not used to just hearing words like royal, especially when, you know, in association with, with Australia. That's right. Or do you want to explain that? So, uh, we were given royal patronage by Queen Elizabeth II okay. in the 1950s. All right, okay. So, we're, we're the only royal university in Australia. Right. And Australia is part of the Commonwealth, right? It, it okay, is still so. part of the Commonwealth, yes. Right. Okay, so, the only college or university in Australia that enjoys royal patronage. That's right. All right, okay. That's right. And, okay. and they even come and visit sometimes. We had uh, nice. Prince Andrew visit us last year. Okay. He came came out to RMIT and, right. and said hello and saw what our students were doing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, again, sorry for asking the obvious, but just to make it clear, where is RMIT based? So we are based in the centre of Melbourne. Okay. So right in the middle, in the heart of Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually own 6 to 7% of the central district business district of wow. Melbourne. Yeah. That's a lot of real estate. It is. Wow. It is. So okay. All right. So, um, obviously, uh, 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 an, an educational institute uh, or institution uh, that is well reputed, uh, RMIT in Melbourne. I don't imagine uh, too many people in Bhutan know about RMIT yet. Well, there's certainly a few people that know about RMIT because okay. we have had a few Bhutanese students uh, right. attend in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'd like more Bhutanese students to be aware of Melbourne right. as a really good study option for them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because generally when people say they're going to Australia or, or down under, they're talking about uh, Perth or Canberra. That's one right. One of these two places. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there's some people um, go to Sydney. Um, Wollongong seems to be a name that uh, comes up quite often as well. Uh, right. But Melbourne, I haven't heard about too many people studying in Melbourne. But, uh, yeah, I, I am told that it's, it's a fantastic, uh, fabulous city. Uh, very cosmopolitan um, it, certainly bigger than than uh, Perth. It's a, it's a much bigger, busier city than Perth. So right. you'd find uh, being there, there's there's a lot of shops, a lot of activity, a lot of nightlife, a lot of sports. Okay. So um, Melbourne uh, prides itself on being the sports capital of Australia. Mm-hmm. So we have a, a local brand of football that we play there. Oh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Australian Rules. Australian football. Rules. Yes, Australian Rules. Yeah. Yes. So uh, mm. um, the MCG, the Melbourne Cricket. Ground mm-hmm. is the, the home of Australian rules football. Oh, yes. The come to think of it, you have the Melbourne Cricket Ground as well. It's famously known for, for the cricket, obviously. That's right. right. So, cricket in summer mm-hmm. and then uh, football in the winter time. Right, okay. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you have the Australian Open tennis that's uh, also played in Melbourne. We do. Uh, the Australian Grand Prix is held in Melbourne. The Australian Motor GP uh, thing is also in Melbourne. That's right. right. So, and uh, RMIT actually plays a part. In the uh, Grand Prix. Okay. So we have many of our students. We sponsor part of the Grand Prix. All right. Uh, so that our students can go and experience that. Okay. Uh, we also have uh, we sponsor the Australian Air Show mm. as well, which happens just outside of Melbourne. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, a lot of our engineering students and uh, those type of students get involved in that one as well. All right. Hmm. Uh, why is everybody going to Perth? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Melbourne sounds fantastic. There's lots to do. And we're, we're yeah. famous for our coffee and our, our coffee culture. Lots right. of cafes okay. and right. uh, lots of eating out. Like, like Bhutanese, we like to eat. Mm-hmm. We enjoy being outside. Okay. So it, it's a... A very good culture, good All place right. to be part of. Okay. All right. So um, let's get straight to the point then, uh, Jody. What brings you here to Bhutan? So I'm here to to meet people. To we're, we're meeting with the Ministry of uh, Adult and Higher Education. <laughs> okay. We're meeting with some of our representatives here mm-hmm. in Bhutan, and we've also had a chance to meet with a few students as well. So what we want to do is get a better understanding of, of what Bhutanese students are looking for mm-hmm. uh, when they're looking to study overseas, and how we might be able to assist them if Melbourne and RMIT is where they want to be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, why would anyone want to go? Oh, all right. So we've talked about Melbourne, but why would anyone anyone want to go specifically to RMIT? Well, I I think because RMIT has so much to offer. Okay. So we have eighty five thousand students that currently have made the choice to study at RMIT okay. in Melbourne. So we're big Australian university mm. we're very comprehensive so there's very few programs that we don't offer okay uh, so we offer a full suite of business programs uh, many design programs uh, things in communication engineering nursing education you, you name it mm-hmm. we will have a program in that area and we will offer them from vocational through to undergraduate studies so your bachelor degrees and then right through to masters and research programs as well right um you talked about vocational is that what you mean i have this piece of paper over here that says currently the university has about eighty-seven thousand higher and vocational education students making making it one of the largest dual sector education providers in australia yes is, is that what you mean by dual sector exactly what we mean by dual sector okay so uh, so we're, we're very experienced in getting students ready for the workplace. Okay. Ah. So that vocational work aspect. Okay. We can take students, whether it be through a, a six month or a twelve month mm. uh, program, or whether it's a, a four year bachelor program, and we get them ready for for their life beyond the university. Alrighty. Now let's just put this very simply again. Now, what if some, if a Bhutanese uh, person were to go and study in RMIT? Um, are you saying that you would place him or her um, at some place, at least for some time? I mean, an internship or something of that sort? That's exactly what we do. All right. So, uh, part, something that we very much pride ourselves on are okay. our internships and work placements and also a strong connection to industry. So, as well as um, placing students out in industry, so if a student was doing a, a nursing degree, they will have a compulsory placement, okay. a number of compulsory placements as part of that. Uh, even if they're studying engineering, mm. business, mm. they will have placements as part of that program. And we find for many of them that work experience and then coming back into the classroom with what they've learned, okay. it's invaluable. It, it changes the way they oh, learn okay, and nice. changes the way they then take that learning back into the workplace and it becomes an ongoing kind of relationship in the way they can do that. Right, right. Um, all right. So, would that person? Would you also have that person um, possibly link link up with uh, you know uh, relevant agencies uh, or prospective employers in Bhutan? So we we could do that. Probably mm. in Bhutan, we haven't got as many links as we have in other countries. Right. Uh, but what we would do in those cases is we certainly would give students the skills to do that. Okay. So ah. we make sure they've got the learnings behind them. Right. That that even having that work experience in Melbourne shows them how they should be interacting with employers in the first place. Okay. So our aim of, and, and one of the, the catch cries of the university is that we're making our students ready for life and work. Okay. So we're, we're not talking about them just at their time at RMIT. We're always thinking about how they will go beyond RMIT. All right. Okay. It's really important to us and something we, we pride ourselves on. Right. Uh, but you were, you know, in a way, talking about, you know, the links, uh, linkages and, and uh, ties that you have with prospective employers elsewhere in, in other countries. I understand about 20% of uh, the students 
are from our foreign students that's and right. that's from about 200 different countries that's right we've got and the college has been around for over 100 years yes yes okay. we're 1887 <laughs> so a long time we've yes. been part of melbourne for a very long time okay uh, we also have campuses in vietnam okay and we have a center in barcelona in spain as well i was just reading about that uh, a, a while ago um i'm not quite sure i have so many papers of I know. yeah right uh, i've lost it plenty uh, right anyway okay yeah so barcelona yeah. yeah right okay so we use that as a research hub and and uh we attract a lot of research funding mm-hmm. uh through that but also linkages into um various big employers and big industries there so we work with boeing and um some big names Okay. Um, like right. that. Oh, here it is. Uh, during the 1990s, the institution gained university status and developed campuses in uh, Bandura? Bandura. Bandura. Very well Bandura. done. Okay, Very Bandura. well done. <laughs> and Brunswick. Yes. In the city's northern suburbs and later in Ho Chi Minh City and uh, Hanoi in Vietnam. Um, the university also has a training site situated on the Williams Base of the Royal Australian Air Force in the western suburb of Point Cook. And in, two, in 2013, RMIT opened a research and industrial collaboration center. There you are in uh, Barcelona, Spain. Right. Um... This link with uh, Vietnam, what's that about? So it's it's more than a link. There are actual campus that is based there. Right, right, right. And we have 5,000 students studying wow. with RMIT okay. uh, across those campuses. Right. So they are full uh, RMIT university campuses that run there. Okay. But mm. why specifically Vietnam? Uh, I think Vietnam uh, has a long association with Australia. Okay. So uh, it goes back sort of through, through our history in the okay. 1950s during the wartime. And I think it's a way that uh, Australian education can give back to a community like Vietnam. Okay. So not all students can afford to travel to Australia. Mm. So it's a way then ah. that we can provide okay. a quality education, uh, a quality Australian education for those students in Vietnam. And we're also finding we're attracting students from, from other markets too. Mm. So we, right. we have, you know, students coming from Sri Lanka to Vietnam, students oh, nice. coming from France mm. and uh, other places to okay. Vietnam as well. Okay. That's mm. interesting. Yeah. Um, well, the little that I know of Vietnam, oh, by the way, what's the capital of Vietnam? Is it uh, Ho Chi Minh or is it uh, Hanoi? Han- Hanoi is Hanoi? the capital, ah, but okay. Ho Chi Minh would be where a lot of the business mm. takes place. Kind of like, uh, like, well, like Thimphu Pinsley. <laughs> Uh, Delhi, Mumbai. Not exactly uh, Sydney, Melbourne, I suppose. That well, because Can- they, Canberra is the yeah, capital. Yeah, Canberra. Canberra. <laughs> so, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, right. What, what we're going to do, Jody, is go, we're going to take a short little break. Uh, could we possibly play a song, I mean, that of your choosing? Well, I'd like to hear some proper Bhutanese All right. music. Okay. And Bhutanese so, music? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've had a hint mm. that uh, I should listen to Bones uh, Santa Ringsa. Okay. Did I, did I get that right, um, everybody? I think Not I know quite? what song you're talking about. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Sata Ringsa. Thank Sata you. Ringsa, which is a, a song that's appropriate because Sata Ringsa, a distant place, right? And that's where Melbourne is. But uh, uh, let let us not make you feel like it's a very far and distant place where you feel lonely. It looks like from from what we've been uh, hearing from uh, Jody, it looks like it's going to be a <coughs> home away from home. All right, Satharinsa, by Bones. All right, for those of you who tuned in late, you're listening to a special education show as we, you know, occasionally bring to you on Radio Valley 99.9 FM. We're talking right now with uh, Jody Alton, the director of the Global Student Recruitment at RMIT, uh, which is the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology uh, based in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the institute at length uh, here. Uh, we've also been talking a bit about uh, Melbourne. Um, but let's cut to the chase. A lot of the Bhutanese students would want to know, uh, and it's a perfectly legitimate uh, concern as well, do you offer scholarships? We uh, we do offer some scholarships, okay. and we're certainly looking at something that we might be able to specifically offer mm-hmm. to the Bhutanese 
uh, oh. students. So we're, we're looking okay. at that. Okay. And uh, we'll be back here in August mm-hmm. and hopefully we'll be able to make an announcement Alrighty. at that time. Well, uh, I'd certainly be excited to hear about it. I mean, I don't have plans to go to, go to Australia, but I'd still like to, like to hear about it because uh, uh, as it is, that's, that's uh, a place where you know, somehow or the other, my sister's in Australia, by the way. Oh. Yeah, uh, and uh, two of my friends left recently for Australia as well. So inevitably, uh, I think most of us have someone or the other who's who's there or wants to go there, and we'd definitely be interested in in uh, information like that. Yeah. But, but uh, Jody, tell us um, why is it that that you've come here to Bhutan? Why Bhutan specifically? Well, we we know that uh, Bhutanese students are, are really good students. Okay. So we've seen when they they get to the university, they uh, tend to be very successful mm-hmm. in their studies. Mm-hmm. Uh, they commit to their studies, mm. and then they go on to have really successful careers. Mm. So in talking to people today as well, many of them will also um, work part time while they're studying. And I think that's why RMIT and Melbourne offer a, a really good opportunity for those students okay. to, to come and, and become part of the um, you know, Melbourne community for a mm. period of time. Okay. There's, there's part-time job opportunities there, so mm. I think there's good opportunities for students coming. I think a lot of the Bhutanese students would definitely want to know about that, you know, uh, part-time job opportunities as well. Uh, A lot of them work and study at the same time, uh, as I understand it. So, yeah, that's a very practical concern also. And and I think that's where the advantage of RMIT being the heart of Melbourne uh, really comes into play, because we find a lot of students will get jobs in um, Mm -hmm. hospitality, uh, in uh, a a range of things, in retail, Mm. those sorts of things, and uh, uh, Bhutanese students have good skills to come in and, and work in those those sort of positions. Okay. And, and Melbourne has a lot of opportunity. It's a city that's growing right. at the moment. What uh, what the you know, population of Melbourne be like? Uh, so it's about 3.5 million. 3.5 million people. <laughs> that is. is a large city. It is. Uh, we don't even have 3.5 million uh, or 1 million Bhutanese uh, in, in the world. We're an endangered species. Uh, <laughs> so all of us can fit there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess that that means it's uh, there's plenty of job uh, prospects for part-time jobs. Um, it's a very cosmopolitan city as right. well. Mm-hmm. So people from every corner of the world uh, live and, and feel comfortable in Melbourne. Right. Um, what's the weather like there right now? So right now, I haven't checked it today, but mm-hmm. it's probably about... 22, 23 degrees. Oh, that's nice. Uh, but Melbourne has very variable wet weather. Right, obviously. So I had, like I said, I hadn't checked it today. Okay. So it, it could be 16 or 17 degrees or it could be 27 degrees. Right, but you're done with the summer, are you? We're, we're pretty much done with summer. Okay. But Melbourne is known for surprising you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in the middle of summer, we can equally get a day of 16 degrees and cold and rainy. Oh, okay. Or we can have a day of 45 degrees. Right, okay. So... Melbourne likes to surprise people with the weather. <laughs> mm. All right. Uh, just picking up on some of the things that you were saying, and, and especially the, the uh, flattering things that you had to say about uh, Bhutanese students. I don't want to digress here, but I just have to make the side note. Uh, in fact, I, I already made this comment uh, <laughs> off air a while ago. Uh, you said Bhutanese students are good students. Uh, they're hardworking. They're very focused. Why is it that we are that way only when we are not in Bhutan? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I, I don't get it. I mean, the civil service here, so many, so many people have been, uh, have uh, master's degrees, uh, some of them multiple master's degrees from some of the most reputed universities in the world. Uh, They come back with these great big ideas and then they come over here and then they sit behind their desk and do nothing, absolutely nothing. Ah! That's my good. Anyway, I had to make that comment. Sorry. It's so beautiful and mm. chilled here. Is that why? Um, possibly. Possibly. Um, if you haven't been warned, uh, we occasionally slip into what we call the Bhutanese time warp. Right. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds kind of nice, though. Uh, actually, I, I think uh, that pro- probably contributes to our level of happiness to a large degree. Also to our level of frustration <laughs> with each <laughs> <Yeah>. other. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so... Um, again, uh, Jody, what, what kind of courses? Uh, I mean, I know there, there, there are many courses, but what are the courses that uh, RMIT is 
particularly known for? So it, it, we're, we're really known for for a lot of courses. So okay. our, our fashion and our design programs. Okay. We are a real specialist and, mm. and stand out in terms of those sort of programs. Architecture as well. Mm-hmm. But then on the other hand, we're also considered to be top 100 ranked for, for areas such as education okay. and some of our management and business programs. So it's really varied in terms of what we offer. Engineering as well, we're, we're ranked in the top 100 uh, okay. in the QS rankings in the world for, for those type of programs. Okay. Uh, we get a lot of interest from Bhutanese students in our nursing programs. Okay. So nursing and education tend to be mm. really popular here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think, you know, we offer those sort of Good, good, solid, comprehensive programs as well. All right. And we offer them, as I said, at a, a, a vocational level, uh, then bachelor's level or master's. Okay. So we, we can... We have nearly something for everybody, and I think they can be assured it's a quality education that's very much grounded okay. in making our, sure our students are prepared for the workplace. All right. Okay. Um, how about research facilities and research opportunities? Yes. Uh, so, so we, mm. yeah, we certainly have the, the research areas. Mel- Melbourne is a, a hub in Australia for research. Okay. Uh, we have a number of uh, students undertaking uh, their HDR or mm. PhDs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think we, as a large university, are able to take on students depending of their area of focus. So we have a lot of science PhD students. Okay. My own sister-in-law, she's from Russia, oh. is studying a, a PhD in fashion. Okay, nice, nice. So, all right. So you, you obviously jo- Jody is from the university, but uh, you know, there's no denying the facts. It's a large university. It has a rich history. Um, it is well connected uh, and reputed all over the world. Um, it's based in in a fabulous place uh, that sounds so attractive uh, melbourne by the way uh, has been voted the world's most livable city i don't know by who but it's been voted the world's most livable city seven years in a row and uh, this piece of paper in front of me says it's charm creative energy sophistication and welcoming atmosphere captivates students um all right. It's also the world's one of the world's most multicultural cities. It benefits from the influences of more than 230 different nationalities. Almost half of its four million four million people. It appears. Oh, sorry. I, All right. Sorry uh, to those half a million that I missed out on there. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Melbourne is also safe, well designed, and easy to get around on foot by bike or public transport. All right. Yeah, we, you can read about that. We even have stuff. free free public transport in free the heart of, in the heart of the city, in the very okay. heart. Okay. So we find students often don't need to purchase a car like ah. they would in other cities. So, okay. So Melbourne is very accessible with public transport. Ah, that's a real not, advantage. Oh, yes, that is another advantage because yeah. a lot of Budney students who go out inevitably have to have to buy a car mm. because they need to get around. But what you're saying is. You possibly may not have to spend on that. Yeah, yeah. so the, the very small heart of the city, the transport's free. Okay. But beyond that, it's um, oh, cost-effective, yeah. and you, you don't need to buy a car. So okay. that's a, I, I um I catch the the train into RMIT myself every day. All right, all right. You make the sound so attractive. I mean, I have no plans of, of uh, resuming studies and, and uh, furthering my academic, uh, very exalted academic uh, <laughs> qualifications. But uh, you make it sound so so attractive. Uh, I just might take up uh, a course in uh, RMIT. Um, right. Um, Jody, is there anything specifically that you would want to say to, you know, uh, people out there who are interested in RMIT or might want to, you know, want to know about RMIT how, how should they possibly learn more about RMIT? Right, so we've got an Australian education event taking okay. place in August Okay, in August so, Yes, right. so I'd, I'd welcome students to come along that, that'll that be uh, here Okay. So come along and, and find out more about us. Uh, in the meantime you can always uh, find out more via our website. Okay. That's pretty easy if you uh, can just Google RMIT you'll, you'll find us right. quite easily Right. Uh, and then Get in touch with us. We're always happy to, to provide more information about the university. Okay. Is, is, is there nobody here locally? So we do have an agent here, Global right. Reach. Okay, Global Reach. So right. you can come mm. and uh, talk talk to our, uh, our counsellors at Global Reach. Right. And they'll be able to assist. Okay. So you heard that. Global Reach is the place to go if you want to find out more about RMIT. Or you could uh, check out the website. And, of course, if you have any direct questions for them, uh Jody says there's an education fair in in 
August, August and Global August. Reach have all the in- information about that. Ah, one. okay, all right. So there you go. Those are all the details that that you might uh, need. Um, in the meantime, uh, are, are you here for long right now? Is, is not, there anybody? We're not here for long, okay. but but Global Reach are always here and ah, on the ground okay. for us. All right, okay. Um, so in any case, it's been a fabulous uh, half an hour with you uh, talking Thank about RMIT and Melbourne. Uh, like I said, it really does sound extremely attractive, and I'm sure that there are many people out there who are actually looking at options. You know, when, when we talk about uh, studying abroad, especially in Australia, um, it's not just Perth and Canberra that uh, people are probably thinking about now. They're probably thinking RMIT as well and Melbourne. Um, right, so um, good luck on your travels back. Uh, thank you. Jody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and we hope that there will be a point in time very soon where we will see scores of Bhutanese studying at RMIT. We hope so. Thank you so much. Alrighty, so we're done here on the special education show on uh, Radio Valley 99.9 FM. Uh, just to be clear again, I will be back at 4.30 on my mixtape as always. So in the meantime, enjoy the music. Ooh.